Keep a few racks on me. I used to work in the factory. Been hating it. Never Hey everybody, it's the coach. Welcome to the special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the Indianapolis Colts. With that, let's get on up to Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. For the call, we bring in our broadcasters, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, thanks, Coach. EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here in Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with Eli Manning and the New York Giants. And hi again, everybody, alongside my partner, Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, when you and I were going through our final run-throughs at breakfast, we kept thinking tonight we're going to get to see a couple of very good passing offenses. And we're talking about both sides having multiple receivers that could have an impact on this game. It's not just one guy that's going to make all the plays. If you take him away, maybe number two, number three, they make the big plays that impact who wins the game. And he'll take it back to about the 19-yard line. The New York Giants fell in week one to Jacksonville, and that man Eli Manning was really under constant pressure from the Jags' front seven. He finished the game 22 of 37, 273 yards and an interception, but it was just tough for him to find any breathing room. It certainly was. Constant pressure from the Jags' front seven, which is one of the better ones in the league. They're going to need Saquon Barkley to really be that presence in the backfield to run the football and take some of that pressure off. They're going to want those consistent three, four, five-yard runs from him so they can keep moving the chains. Now the rookie first rounder from Penn State, Saquon Barkley. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know the securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Second down, here's Barkley. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It's a loss of two, now third down. Well, that play was over before it even got started. Thanks for nothing, huh? How about that? That sets up a very difficult third down call now. Danger here on their opening drive as they come up on a third and 12. From the gun, it's Manning. And Latimer's got it. And he's going to get this one across the 30 yard line. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. of a yard there and now second down. Brandon, one thing about blitzes, they really confuse offensive linemen at times and what you have to do is lock in on the guy right in front of you. If you don't, you saw the end result. Defensive tackle end up making the play. Second down. It's hauled in by Shepard. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And the offense. 
offensive starters for the New York Giants. In his third year now out of Oklahoma is Sterling Shepard, and he led the Giants in receiving yards in the absence of Odell Beckham in 2017, but had to battle the injury bug as well. Only played in 11 games with his own ailments, and when he's healthy, though, he is shifty, fast, electric down the middle of the field, and the Giants offense needs that in a big way. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. Shotgun now for Manning. And he gets it complete to Latimer. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. The pickup of 11, and it moves the chains. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. First and ten, here's Manning. That's caught by his tight end, Evan Ingram. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That throw good for four. It's second down. And now a look at the defense for the Colts. Expected to be a centerpiece of the Colts defense that has to improve, and that's Malik Hooker. Second year safety out of Ohio State was limited to just seven games due to injuries in his rookie season. They love his range, they love his toughness, and they'll need every bit of that in an ever-improving AFC South that likes to throw the ball around. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. From midfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. They were trying to get it there to Sterling Shepard. And that takes us from second to third down. And that is first incompletion after a four for four start. Yeah, but they shouldn't back off from what they're doing. I like the play calling right out of the gate. I like the tone that they're setting. Keep going in that direction. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Again, it's Manning. Over the middle, he's got his tight end, Ingram. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon. Chester Rogers, deep for Indianapolis. Indianapolis Colts coming off a loss to the Cincinnati Bengals week one as Andrew Luck brings them out here. Well, for Andrew Luck in that game, the thing that Colts fans were just happy about was to see him on the field. First regular season action, Charles, in 616 days. And they certainly put his shoulder to the test, didn't they? Threw it 53 times in his first game back after all that time off. 39 completions, 319 yards, and two touchdowns. And also had to handle the pressure that Cincinnati put on him with their really good defensive front. Colts led most of the way. And in the big play, Jack Doyle, the tight end, after a catch. Ball was popped free and returned for a touchdown. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. Room here to run. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front and linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense because someone's going to run for some big yardage. Right. 
Running game working. They'll stick with it on first down. And not much room to operate as he'll get this up only to about the 41. Michael Thomas on the stop. And here are the Colts' offensive starters. T.Y. Hilton's the guy that I'm going to be keeping a big eye on because when you've put together four straight Pro Bowls, led the NFL in receiving yards 2016, you know the 2017 yards were an aberration, okay? He was less than 1,000 yards receiving. Inconsistent quarterbacking play, but I think he bounces back big in 2018 and beyond. Too darn explosive being able to go down the middle and making big plays. Here's Luck now on second down. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. And we look now at the defense for the Giants. Coming off a of Pro Bowl in 2017 is Landon Collins, who was an All-Pro two years ago and got many votes for NFL Defensive Player of the Year. This is a guy that we know is what we call box safety, almost like an extra linebacker in his ability to tackle and hit. But his coverage ability as a safety has improved since he's been in the league, and his ball hawking is getting better each and every year. After an incomplete pass on second down, that'll leave him trying to convert on third and nine. A shotgun snap for Long. And he's got his man, Hilton. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Luck able to find Hilton there for a cold first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Now Luck, throw left side is complete to Rodgers. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tough for guys trying to get to the football. Now a carry from back. And an alley to run. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. A gain of 11 that time and a Colts first down. You were telling me this yesterday. This is exactly what they want to do on the opening drive, establish the ground game. Yeah, remember our conversation? We were talking about what one of the GMs in the league has told me repeatedly. It's a big man's game. And it's not necessarily size. He's talking about playing some big boy football. Line up, get leverage, knock people back and establish the run early. Right back to him on first down. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. To throw on second down is Locke. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. His first catch there, good for 10 yards and a first down. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. The Colts with a first red zone opportunity of the ball game. First and 10 at the 19. From the red zone now, Lock. His throw cut. And the five. And he takes this one in for a Colts touchdown. Jack Doyle from 19 yards away. And the Colts are going to take a first quarter lead. The big fellow was the recipient there for that touchdown pass, and it seems like more and more the tight end is the guy you have to worry about most in the passing game.
Now Adam Vinatieri for the point after. Vinatieri connecting on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So that drive consumes nine plays all told, and it culminates in an Indianapolis touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Cody Latimer now on the return. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Giants offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they had a long drive going last time, but it stalled out. But still, maybe something positive to carry forward from that last drive. Well, a few different things that you carry forward. Number one, as you noted, they were moving it pretty well, so that gives them a lot of confidence. The second part is, keeps your defense off the field, mm -hmm. gives them a chance to rest up a little bit. And last but not least, uh -oh. you've taken a good look at what you've done on offense, noted where the weaknesses are, and you know when you want to come back to them. Like when you're organized with your points. Well point done. A, B, and C. They'll start out on the ground and Saquon Barkley. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. Officially no gain on the play and it's second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Before they can get settled in here, time expires on the first quarter of action. 7-0 is our score. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and it's the Giants with the football here as we begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. Fake the handoff. Now Manning. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Red Allison, the intended receiver, and it'll bring up third down. Let's face it, perfection is something we all chase, whether it's playing this game or whatever we do. Hard to attain, but that's what they were searching for as that pass goes incomplete. The Giants on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and ten. Working from the gun, Manning. He finds Beckham complete. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. First catch there for OBJ, and that good for a first down. So Manning to Beckham in this defense, they better hone in on that connection. It's almost like an electrical charge for him, isn't it? When he catches the first one, I'm talking about OBJ. He just goes to the huddle and says, more, more, more. And really, he, he's just one of those guys that once he gets going, look out. Now Stewart on first down. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Colts territory. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. Now whistles here and a flag down. 
I think a giant jumped early. False start, offense. And yeah, that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still second down. The false start hurts him there a bit. Backs him up to second and nine. Operating from the gun, Manning. And this is Latimer, complete. And he's brought down. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Now from Colts territory, here's a first and 10 at the 37-yard line. A handoff to Barkley, fighting his way down to about the 35-yard line. Big Al Woods there to make the tackle. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half, maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Second down, here's Manning toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Odell Beckham that time, and it's third down. But not to get too overcritical there, because he knows what he's doing, but his shoulders looked a little off kilter there when he threw that. I think you're being overly critical there. You're just analyzing it, and he gets those shoulders right. That pass will go from incomplete to complete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. To throw, it's Manning. And Ingram holds it in. And he's going to get this down near the 20 yard line. And they get 14 yards there at a first down. I feel like Eli Manning has just gone from downfield bomber to a guy who can complete everything. He can hit him underneath now, yeah, can he? Yeah, we just saw that there with that pass completion. The maturity of a veteran taking what the defense will give him. Manning now, 8 of 11 in this first half. He's got it first and 10. From the gun, Manning caught left side. It's Beckham. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. That throw good for four. It's second down. The game against Jacksonville was a return for Odell Beckham Jr. Week five last year went down with the ankle injury. And he was busy, targeted 15 times. What do you have? He was he was over 100 yards. Yeah, it was 111 yards. 11 of those passes caught out of the 15 targets. And this is how good Odell Beckham is. Jacksonville, after the game, after giving up 11 catches for 111 yards, felt like they did a nice job on it and kept him in check. So that just tells you, when you can do that with him and he doesn't shred you with those big plays where it's a catch and he takes it to the house, defenses feel good about their production against him. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Whistles here and a flag down. I think a giant jumped early. False start, offense. And that'll set him back five. Still first down.
Boy, they had it at the one. The false start moves it to the six now for first and goal. After the penalty, they go with Barkley. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive, but they'll be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game. They'll give it to him up the middle. And he will take it on in for a giant touchdown. Saquon Barkley, a six-yard touchdown run. And the Giants are an extra point away from tying up this football game. I know the play ends up in the end zone with one person carrying the ball, but how about that big mass of humanity that guided him to that spot? Yeah, they got there, but I love the dive. Always a fan of the dive. Aldrich Rosas on for the extra point. PAT up and good by Rosas. And we are tied at seven. So that drive, 12 plays in length. And it's capped off by a touchdown run of six yards. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Fielded about a yard deep. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. The Colts now, their offense works their way back onto the field. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10, just shy of the 30. Throwing his lock. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Six yards on the pickup, and it'll be second down. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Here's Mack. And he went nowhere. Well, he went backwards, back to the 33. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. And they insert their dime package. Six DBs here on third and six. Expecting pass all the way. Out of the gun. Luck. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 35. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with during a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. And now out come the Giants. 
It's a quick turnaround for them after the turnover, but the way they moved it on their last drive, they're probably eager to get right back at it. And you know me and you know my tendencies in this situation. What do I want right now? Be aggressive. Be aggressive. Take your shot right here. running room down to the 32 give them three on first down it'll set up a second and seven they tried a quick hitter inside but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through didn't happen on that play well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning let's see if they do it anyway Here's a give to Barkley. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Two minutes to play in a tightly contested first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Well, good field position to start the drive, but under the gun now here on third and eight. Operating from the gun, Manning. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Shepard. And now here's a timeout called by the Colts on the defensive side of the ball. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Aldrich Rosas now to try the Giants' field goal. Spotted at the left, hash this from 45. And the kick by Rosas is good. And they take the lead here now at 10-7. They got the interception, but very little movement after, and that forces him to settle for three. And it does feel like settling when that happens, doesn't it? It certainly does, but we got to give a lot of credit where it's due, and that's to the defense because they ran onto the field. This is what we call sudden change, right? Interception, you've got to go put out the fire, and they did, holding them to a field goal. After the field goal, here's Rosas to kick it away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Andrew Luck and company heading back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for them, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Trying to shake off the interception, he'll look to throw. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. On second down, here's Locke. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. 
It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. First down now, but the clock continues to move. On first and ten, Locke. This is caught. It's Ryan Graham. 16 yards to pick up there. The Colts have a first down. And when you're playing a quarterback with some experience and some boxing, you enter the danger zone when you decide to blitz him because if he's able to diagnose as he did on that play, he can hurt you downfield. He reads defenses so well, doesn't he? He really does, and the best part about that play for him, I don't think that was his primary target. I don't think so either. I think he had the read, figured out where the blitz was coming from, and went to a secondary target for a really nice game. Luck now. After the pick on the last drive, three for three to start this drive. It's first and ten. Luck throwing again. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Ryan Grant, the intended target. And now it's second down. But one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here again, Luck. And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. It's a gain of five. And they're going to face a third down. Was that a receiver? <laughs> yeah, actually it was. It was a running back who was a receiver on the play. Ike's been spending time in the receiver drills getting his feet down. Well, those guys out of the backfield, they got to be good, agile with their feet. He showed the agility there with a toe tap. No doubt about it. It's like he'd run to ballet school, got the toes down, and stayed in bounds. Again, Luck. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 39. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Uh, switching gears for a second, because you were talking earlier. We had some odd games in week one. I don't think anything, though, takes the cake quite like that game in Miami. How about that lightning delay? Multiple lightning delays. Yeah, when you open up the season in the state of Florida, and it's not a dome, Good luck. You've got a chance of this <laughs> happening, right? It happened in Tampa a couple of seasons ago, maybe a couple of times if I remember correctly. This game wound up taking seven hours and eight minutes to finish when all was said and done. Normally, we do a game in three and a half or less. That's unbelievable. So great stamina for the fans, great stamina for the players. And how about our colleagues in the announce booth? Ooh. Great stamina for them yeah, as well. Indeed, longest game in NFL history. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten. So after the INT, it's Manning. Open man right side is Ingram. And he'll be out of bounds just shy of the 40. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Throwing on first down is Manning. Throw left side complete. It's Shepard. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Seven yards to pick up on the pitch and catch. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. From the gun, it's Manning. He dumps it off to Barkley, and he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gunn alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Manning now 14 out of 17, 82%, and it's first and 10. 
Again, it's Manning. And that's going to be incomplete. That is the first time that they've targeted him that he has not come down with a catch. He's caught everything that's been thrown his way, a dominant pass receiver, because when he's doing that kind of work, it really hurts you on the back end. And even though it's an incompletion there, I think they're going back to that well. Manning again here on second and ten. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The pro bowler Odell Beckham, the intended receiver. Third down here. One thing I have learned, receivers don't mind high throws so much to the sideline, but do that over the middle to them, and not only are the DBs going to throw a little verbal trash their way, when they get back to the huddle, they're going to have a few words to say to their QB, aren't they? Yeah, hung out to dry a little bit there on the high throw. Luckily fell incomplete. Now Manning. And now another one thrown incomplete. Kenny Moore that time there on the coverage. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past, the biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. He hit his first one. This from 44 yards out now. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. Now it's scooped up, and this is a live football. Partner, I think they saw something there. I mean, they came from the right side deliberately, and you know there's always a designated guy who goes and blocks it, but it's the rest of his teammates that get him free. take some time to spotlight T.Y. Hilton now. They've got to be thinking how can we get him a little bit more involved here. Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far, just a single catch in this game. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout. As they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. So they had the big loss on that first down pass play and facing a second and long. A shotgun snap for Love. And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. And now maybe they want some extra time to talk about this third and long play as we'll get a timeout. As the clock will stop with 21 seconds to go here in the first half. And welcome back, the offensive unit. They took the timeout, and now they get set to line up as we resume action. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. From the gun, here's Luck. And an alley to run. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. It'll be a gain of 17 and an Indianapolis first down. 
On first down, it's long. And some space here. And he'll slide down to avoid the tackle. So we come upon halftime here with the visiting Giants out on top. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. We want to remind you that new this year in regular season games, I'll take you around the NFL, give you stats and scores from games in progress, as well as look back at games that have already been completed. So keep an eye out for that. But for now, let's get you back out to Brandon and Charles. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. They begin the drive on the ground with Mack. Trying to turn the corner, but they string him out and stop him at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. And that run was memorable for only one reason. There's absolutely no place to run with the football. No gaps, no creases, no gain. They keep it on the ground, Mack again. And again, he's going to be stopped up right at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the run there, and now they'll be looking at a third down. And he had a nice play there from his free safety position to hold him to nothing. And, Brandon, remember when the free safety was always back away from the line of scrimmage? That's changed. They always <laughs> that changed in a big way. The way we see it now, they're almost mirrors between the free safety and the strong safety. One will be up, one will be back, or sometimes both will be in the same spot. On that play, free safety was there, no gain. And he finds a man with a crossing route. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez. And surprisingly, this is the first punt of the game for either team. Taking it about the 16. They call that a 49-yard punt, but a net of just 39 following the 10-yard return. And it'll be Giant football first and 10. Here's the Giants offense now getting set to start the third quarter. They have the lead here. Well, we talk a lot about pregame speeches. What are halftime speeches like? For the most part, not nearly as emotional. They're a lot more clinical. Every now and then, though, they'll get after you if they think they need to light a fire. But in this case, let's go into the virtual locker room because here's what I think happened. They got in there and they said, listen, let's take control right away. Yeah, Defense, we've got, yeah. we got, de we got, we got the lead. Defense, don't give up any points. Turn the ball back over to the offense and let them go down and score and give us more of a cushion in the game. Check so far. Defense shut them down. Let's see what the offense gets done. Give him nine there on the first down completion. 
seeing that play and understand just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? <laughs> and what a really nice gain right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. Manning to throw on second down. Over the middle to back him. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Manning able to find OBJ there for a Giants first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. down. He'll complete this to Ingram as tight end. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. The completion good for three and it's second down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. First down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. They'll now out of the gun. And nowhere really to go. There to stop him was Darius Leonard. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. And they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. The Giants on third down. They've hit four of seven. This will be third and six. Shotgun now for Manning to Barkley on the check down. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. A nice pick up there, 10 yards, and it'll move the sticks. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. Read the pressure and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Manning going to come up on first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Now Saquon Barkley. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Now a play fake. Manning. A battle for it, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 21, and his guys are going to take over the line. Well, quite a few teams this past week in the NFL were playing with new quarterbacks, guys that have been in the league, but in a new uniform. And they had quite a bit of success. You noted some of them. Who'd you have down? There's really incredible success when you think about it. Kirk Cousins in Minnesota won. Case Keenum in Denver won. Alex Smith with Washington won at Arizona. Pat Mahomes, he started one game last year, but it was really a throwaway. His true debut on the road against the Chargers wins. And Tyrod, Tyrod, whichever way he However. wants it pronounced, got a tie with Cleveland. How about a special category? Ryan Tannehill back with the Dolphins. He wins in their home game against Tennessee. And fear the beard, Ryan Fitzpatrick, <laughs> what a monster performance on the road, beating New Orleans with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And if you guys were worried, Brady and Rodgers, still pretty good. Yes. Luck and the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 21. A run by Mack to start the drive. And that didn't fool anybody. He's going to be dropped in the backfield. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. 
sometimes with the running game, you've just got to stick with it. Look, it's the third quarter, no time to panic. But that also doesn't mean you just do it the same way you've been doing it the entire ball game. Maybe change up some blocking assignments or run a few different plays, but stay with the overall essence of the running game. To throw on second down is Locke. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Doyle. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. Quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. Now a play fake and it's locked. And he can't get away from the pressure the Giants get there. Kareem Martin coming in to drop him for a loss of eight, and it'll be fourth down. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sack. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez on for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. This is fielded at the 27. 51 yards on the punt there. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. And the Giants ready to come out now. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. And of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get him down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, that does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. Manning and the Giants come up now first and 10 at their own 37. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Oh, incomplete. A turnover would have really helped there. Almost intercepted. Instead, it's just second down. Well, we got a second here to look back to week one. A handful of nice road wins. The biggest surprise, no doubt, CD. How about Tampa Bay winning at New Orleans? Yeah, that was a big one because I'm not sure how many people really expected that. We looked at the schedule in preseason and thought, oh, my God, for Tampa. At New Orleans, at home for Philadelphia, home for Pittsburgh. I figured an 0-3 start. If they won one of them, it would be great. Well, they got it on Sunday, winning at New Orleans. Washington at Arizona, Cincinnati at Indianapolis, Kansas City at the Chargers. All of them had big wins in week one. But didn't you think Chicago was going to pull it out? Oh, that was going to be a stunner. And if Chicago and the Saints had won, some elimination pools wouldn't have had many people left. Yeah, but Aaron Rodgers showed up. And poor Chicago went home with an L. The Giants on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and nine. Working from the gun, Manning. The Latimer's got it. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He goes for 18 there as the drive will continue. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. Manning now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. From the gun, Manning. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. He 
It's Barkley on the counter. They'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Now, they struggled to get him rolling on the ground in the first half, and that's sort of continuing here in the third quarter. Yeah, but I don't think it's time to abandon the running game. I would say keep feeding the horse, and I believe he'll eventually reward them, especially as we get deeper in the game. Throwing his Manning on third down. And this is going to be incomplete. Kenny Moore that time there on the coverage. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? Zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. Here's Riley Dixon now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. And the Colts come up now first and 10 at their own 21. Now Luck. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Kareem Martin able to get him for a loss of about three. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Indianapolis. It's been a very hotly contested game to this point, just a field goal separating these two teams as we get set for the fourth quarter. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. Out of the gun, Luck. And he's going to be brought down. Back at his own six-yard line. Kareem Martin in there to get him for his second sack of the night. Well, it's apparent that these guys are getting after him right from the opening kickoff. They roll right downfield and score on their first possession. And here on defense, back-to-back -back sacks. Someone is ready to play. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. Back to throw. Luck. And he'll just toss it away. So he throws it away, and that brings up fourth down. A pretty good coverage there in both of these defenses. They've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it. And in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? And he'll take it just outside the 40. Nice job bringing that one back. 14 on the return. And the Giants will begin this drive in good shape. First and 10. Here's the Giant offense now making their way back out onto the field. They were forced to punt last time. And I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. If they want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. Now 
it's Barkley. And they'll bring him down after just a short pickup. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. He has just been completely taken out of this game. We're in the fourth quarter. He's single digits in the rushing department. And I know we look at him because the numbers do go to his production, but how about the guys blocking for him? They don't just have his number as a ball carrier. They've got the number of the offensive line and the other guys because they're getting to him before he can get started. On second down, here's Manning. He finds his target, Beckham. And he'll go down shy of the 40 at the 41. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. The Giants on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This will be third and five. Operating from the gun, Manning. And bringing it in right side here, Beckham. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. I think the training and practice broke down on that play because he simply didn't run the route deep enough to get to the first down marker, despite what was a really nice catch and toe tap on the sideline. Well, that's third down 101. You got to go to the marker, know where it is. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. And remember, he had one blocked earlier. That's on target, but it's no good. He had it on line, but it came up just shy of the crossbar. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage. But you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with him putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Good starting field position for the Colts as they have it first and 10. Block. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards on the play. They were in zone defensively, went with a crossing route. It's always interesting to watch that chess match. Yeah, and I think safeties don't mind crossing routes against zone because eventually you're going to run into their territory, and that's when they lick their chops in order to get the big hit or a play on the ball. Offensively, nice execution to find a hole, make the catch. They go play action here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up, and making sure it was a catch. Luck now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. From the red zone now, Luck. And he's got it. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing.
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. The first carry for the rookie, it's Jordan Wilkins. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. Now that was a terrific play. We're down here near the goal line, and only one word comes to mind for me, and that's overwhelm, because they absolutely overwhelmed the offensive line. He came free and made the hit in the backfield. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Throwing his long. And did he get the feet down? No, they'll say he did not. It's incomplete. Trying to get that one to his running back, Marlon Mack. And it's third and five. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe he didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. Now luck on third and goal. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Olivier Vernon able to get him down for a loss of 11 on the play. And it'll be fourth down. My oh man, it's been a rough night for that offensive line, and it's only getting rougher. Five sacks now that they've given up in this contest so far. It feels like the witching hour out here, doesn't it? Okay, stupid question. What's the witching, witching hour? Yeah, the witching hour. That's when everything goes haywire late at night. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here from the right hash. This from 33. Oh, they get to the football. It's blocked. It's picked up. A live ball here, remember. Please tell me this doesn't come off as snarky. But that's a relative chip shot. I mean, you've got to be able to execute that one. I don't care what they design on the other side about trying to block the kick. That should be three points on the board. Yeah, and we've talked about it before. If you're out at 55, 60 yards, low trajectory from here, you get that thing up, this should be three. Yeah, I, there's nothing routine in football, but this one really almost should be. Snap, hold, kick, ball through the post. Didn't happen that way. So now a chance for points in the opposite direction after the blocked field goal. Hey, 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 hey. Set, set, set. Here's Manning to throw. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. Margus Hunt in there to sack him for a loss of six. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. From the gun, it's Manning. Caught left side, it's Beckham. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. This a big play for both sides. What will we see here? Third and four. Manning. And that is incomplete. I'm not sure we could spot any tendency here on this third down. They could have run it or passed it. Either one was available. They chose to try and get it through the air, but they run successful. Here's Riley Dixon now as he's on to punt for New York. This is taken at the 15. A good return there. Call it 13 yards. And the Colts will go on offense here. First and 10. 
Andrew Luck now, he gears up to lead this offense again. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. You're doing really well. You get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. Now it's Luck. The pass complete to Ryan Graham. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. Time for a break. We'll come back for the electrifying conclusion after this. So the Colts in possession of the football as we get you reset. They come up on a first and 10, desperately needing a score here on what could be their final drive. Luck on first down. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. Work with me, partner. Take a deep breath, because that's what they're doing down the field now. That incompletion allowed them to exhale a little bit. Get in the huddle. Kind of scan the crowd. See if any celebrities are here. Relax a little bit as they start this big drive. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. A six-yard pickup on the ground that time, and that'll make it third and four coming up. Back to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So he's unable to complete it there, and just not the game that you would expect from him. He's been off the mark, really, start to finish. Yeah, it makes you wonder what exactly is going on. Is he a little bit dinged up here, or is it just off just by a bit? Maybe he can get it back in this situation. He'll need to. Desperation time for Luck on fourth down. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. They keep the game alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. He'll look to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. This secondary as a unit, they've worked really well together in this one, especially late. A lot of cohesiveness, a lot of communication, and some great athleticism. They're playing so well now, a nickname is sure to follow. They're going to have to name this whole unit soon. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. Now the Colts moving quickly here in the hurry-up offense. They'll look to throw. It's complete to Graham. And down inside the 15 he goes. 12 yards there as they keep this drive rolling. It's another first down. He's back to throw. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Back to throw. 
And that is incomplete. You pressure the quarterback or drape all over the passing lane? Yes, that's exactly what you do. It's both <laughs> because they're not mutually exclusive. They may have been at one time in football, but not anymore. You want to have that pressure. And if you have a big-time pass rusher, send him after the quarterback and then make sure you blanket the field. Luck now to throw. And touchdown. And they've taken the lead here in the final minute. How many people watching this one right here who gave up? Because that score, they might want to try and rush back into this stadium. <laughs> yeah. What looks like is going to be the game deciding score. Although the time left, so you can't count your chickens before they're hatched. Well, they better come back in here and watch this one because you and I, we're not going anywhere. We want to see this one. Vinatieri now for the point after. Vinatieri able to tack on the PAT. And the lead is now 14 to 10. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And the result for the Colts is a touchdown. Set now to kick this one away. Latimer on the return. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Eli Manning and company getting set here as they head back onto the field. This is something we've seen many times over the course of his career. Can he pull off another fourth-quarter comeback? And it's very strange, isn't it? Because when it's a player of this magnitude, even though the guys on defense have the lead and are sitting in the best spot, they're maybe the most nervous people in the stadium because they've seen this happen to too many people before, too many teams. They've got to find a way to shut him down. Here we go again for the grizzled vet. Back to throw, Manning. And this is Shepard on the catch. No gain there on the completion, second and 10. Love the effort, love the dramatics. Getting the feet down. How about a little step shuffle along the sideline there? Almost like a great ballet dancer or a tap dancer. All for no gain though? I was gonna say, it's so pretty <laughs> and it gets you nothing. <laughs> Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and 10. Now Manning. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. A good pick up there, a 22. That's what they need right now. Get the first down, get out of bounds, stop the clock. Just playing smart football, understanding the situation, making the plays necessary, and making sure that clock stops at every opportunity. coverage is so good no matter what you're doing on offense you just can't shake anyone free they try their best to find someone open but they took away every passing alley every angle and shut the play down an incomplete pass on first down that leads to a second and ten <laughs> to throw is Manning it's caught back him. and he's brought down and the clock will now stop as a timeout is called with five seconds left.
So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Instead, second down. Down to their last chance now. This is going to have to be a heat for the end zone and just hope for a miracle. And I don't sit back with everyone back defending. I've got to have somebody watching the quarterback. Don't make it easy for him to set up and throw the ball all the way downfield. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. One final shot. They'll look to throw. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up. And with it. Well, Chuck, exhilarating finish to the end of this ball game. At the end, the Hail Mary prayers, though, they went unanswered. Could have won it, but couldn't get it done. Almost fell schoolyard or playground, didn't it? You know, you remember when you called that play? Everybody just go along <laughs> and try to find someone open. They gave it a shot, but unable to successfully complete it. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. The Colts are winners. We say so long from Indianapolis.